Hey guys, so we are going to talk about the ear in this video and I'll tell you how sound gets from the outside and how it gets through the ear into the ear and how transduction occurs and then changes into a neural message and goes to the brain. So that's what this is. Hopefully it's helpful. So I have a diagram here of the ear and then the middle ear and the inner ear. Um, you can actually find videos or videos, you can find pictures like this on Google Images and you can just type in with labels or without labels. If you want to print one off without labels, you could go in and label all the parts just for practice if you want to. So just make sure if you want to have labels, then you type ear diagram with labels or if you don't, you could type in ear diagram without labels. This is kind of partially labeled, so um, there's actually more parts that you need to know than what's labeled on here. Um, I kind of liked how this was a little more blank so I could talk to you about the parts without you seeing it first. So we're going to start with um, sound. So there's sound outside in the environment and um, some just some basic terms about sound. So the length of a sound wave is called a frequency. And if the wave is longer, then the wave should have a lower pitch. If the wave is shorter, it should have a higher pitch. And so that basically means um, like we in class listen to low and, and, and high frequencies or low and high pitches. That's where the sound starts off, but it starts to get higher and higher and higher, almost like a dog whistle. And then it gets really, 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 really high, so high that you can't hear it anymore. Um, some frequencies are so high that you can't hear it. And so that's, that's what frequency is. It's that um, very low sound to very high, so high that you can't hear it. That's what a um, pitch and frequency is. Um, amplitude is how loud something is, and I think that's easy to remember because um, I immediately think of what's an amp. And so when I hear people talk of amps, they're talking about the like the amplifier that you use with like microphones or if you're like playing music in a band or something, your amp is making your sound louder and an amplifier is increasing amplitude. So if you think of amp, an amp makes things louder. Amplitude is loudness. Um, sound is measured in decibels. So how, how loud something is, is the measurement is a decibel. So just for some references, they say that um, like 80 to 85 is too loud for your ears to be exposed to for too long. And so um, about 30 is a whisper, um, about 60 is a conversation. Um, they say that your earbuds that you listen to can get a maximum of anywhere from 85 to 110. So um, I was reading that they said that just sometimes we don't know how loud is too loud when we're listening it to our earbuds, but if you play them on maximum volume, that is too loud because about 80 to 85 is what will damage your hearing. So um, what I read was that they said, um, just, just for like a rule of thumb, um, whenever you're playing something in your earbud, it should never go higher than 60%. So like if your volume is like one to 10, you'd never wanna go above six. So you just wanna try to make sure that you're never going above 60% of the maximum you know, whatever the volume can get to. Um, if you're at a concert on the front row, that's about 120 decibels, um, or an ambulance going by is 120. And then if you're in the marching band, um, about 200 people, that would be around 130 decibels. So anyway, that's just giving you a reference. You don't need to know um, different types of decibels, but that just helps you understand um, the measurement of decibel. Okay, so let's talk about the ear parts. Um, so here we've got the outer ear. The outer ear is kind of like the funnel where the sound is funneled in. Um, the way that we can locate sounds is by which ear it hits first. So if a sound is coming from this direction, it's going to hit this ear slightly sooner than it will hit this ear. Sorry, my lights went out. Hold on. Uh, let me turn on my motion sensor here. Okay. <laughs> okay. So the sound gets into the ear. It goes through the um, uh, ear canal here or the auditory canal. Um, the sound hits the eardrum and the eardrum is just a membrane that attaches top to bottom of the auditory canal here and it just kind of moves as the sound hits it. As it as the eardrum moves, it hits um, these connective bones here. They're really tiny bones. There's three of them. Um, they're in this uh, middle part of the ear called the hammer, the anvil, and the stirrup. I think the stirrup's really easy to remember because it looks like, I think like a stirrup that you put your foot into if you're sitting on a horse or maybe a spur that you put on your boot. Um, but they go in the order hammer, anvil, stirrup. 
And then those are, those are, they wiggle they, as they vibrate with this eardrum moving them, they vibrate and they send those vibrations into the cochlea here. The cochlea looks like a snail and inside the cochlea there are these little tiny hair cells and the hair cells are really, they're not hair like on your head, but they're nerves. And so the vibrations are sent into the cochlea and the nerves are moving with the vibrations. And as those little hair cells called cilia move like this, they're changing movement that's occurring into a brain message. And so as they move like that, that message is then sent into the auditory nerve. The auditory nerve takes that message that's now a brain message to the um, temporal lobe, specifically the auditory cortex of the temporal lobe. This is the only sensation that does not go through the thalamus. Remember, the thalamus is the sensory switchboard. This is the only one that doesn't get to the sensory switchboard first. Um, and the reason is it's so close to the temporal lobe, it doesn't have to go to the thalamus and then back out. It just goes um, to the temporal lobe to be processed. Um, and then we've got some other parts of the ear. Uh, these are the semicircular canals right here. And these deal with your sense of balance, which is called the vestibular sense. And they're little tiny fluid filled tubes that act like a level. If, if you see um, levels that you use to make sure something's straight, they're really similar to that. It's got a little bit of fluid. And just like we would use a level with a little bubble to see if something is straight, they, the, they have fluid inside in our our um, body uses that fluid to understand where we are. And as the fluid moves in our, our ear there, it helps us understand if we're upright or, or moving. And that sensation is, is sent to the brain as well. Um, this is the eustachian tube. Um, the eustachian tube helps us to feel and understand air pressure. That's where you hear in, in, or in your ear where whenever it pops, that's where it's happening. If you're going up very high in an airplane or if you're going down very low, that's where you're feeling that in your ear. Okay, um, one more thing, hearing loss. So there are, are two terms that you need to know as far as hearing loss. Sensory neural hearing loss, that's the hearing loss that happens with time that will happen to everyone. That is when your cilia break down over time. Um, they will break um, and they will break because of loud sounds. And so that will happen to everyone because of exposure to sound. And so as you age, your hearing decreases. And so that is occurring through sensory neural hearing loss. And then we have conductive hearing loss, that is where um, someone has a mechanical issue in their cochlea. So um, it, we had a guest speaker who came in who talked about he his hair cells didn't operate. So what usually will be done for that person is they could have, if they, if they choose to, they could have a cochlear implant. And the cochlear implant um, has wires that go into the cochlea that just bypass the like the cilia and they go and create the the brain message for the cochlea and it will stimulate the auditory nerve with that message and it will go to the brain and bypass all of the the ears way of um, of creating that hearing okay i think that's all you need to know so if you have questions you can send me an email um, be sure to print off a diagram if you need one um, you need to know the brain parts how the sound gets through the or i'm sorry the ear parts how the sound gets through the ear and um hearing loss hopefully that's helpful